So now that we have all of our mortises cut and cleaned up, we can move on to creating the internal structure of this thing. The stuff that is gonna actually pull all of these big legs we've just created is actually gonna hold them together. So this really is nothing super complex. We're just making a whole bunch of separate frames and then bringing them all together. The one important thing to keep in mind here is that you want to try and mill like pieces together and you also want to go through your cut list and find any parts that have similar qualities. So the first thing we're going to look at is thickness. So we have two primary thicknesses in the internal area of these pieces of furniture. We have five eighths of an inch and we have three quarters of an inch. Those are two very distinct thicknesses that make up the internal components of each one of these pieces. So it doesn't really matter which one you start with, but basically it would go as you'd start over at the jointer, get all your pieces with at least one flat face, one perpendicular edge, and then you go over to the planer and get them down to the thickness. Now the reason you want to run all the same stuff at the same time is so that it all comes out to the same dimensions. That way when you're setting things up like dado stacks later on to cut tenons, or you're just doing pretty much any of your other milling, your machines are already set up for those same pieces. If I wanted to make this hard on myself and I just built like built the nightstands at once, built one of the dressers at one other time and built the other dresser at, the other, at a completely separate time, that would mean setting up things like the dado stack or the table saw fence or the mortiser for doing the same cut, just doing it three separate times. So it's just not as efficient. And again, in some projects, efficiency doesn't matter. But for me, in this case, I want this project to be fairly efficient. So we're gonna start by getting all of our parts down to that proper thickness, which is going to be, you know, it's gonna be definitely be a little bit of work. We've got a lot of pieces to get through. You guys saw the stack in the first few videos there. There is a lot of internal components. All the parts that we've roughed out so far, that all has to be milled down to either three quarters or five eighths of an inch thick. So there is a lot of work to be done there. Then once we have all of our pieces down to their thicknesses, we're gonna start looking for other commonalities. So our next very common common thing is all of our side stretchers. So the top, the bottom, outside stretchers, all of our drawer support stretchers, and all of our little dividers that are going to go in between our different levels of the front and back stretchers, all of these pieces have the exact same length and tenon length to them, so we can mill all of those at once. Again, it's all about setting up the table saw fence one time, passing all these pieces through, and just being done with it really quickly like that. Okay, so I chose not to show the initial milling process here purely because it was just really boring. So what I've done so far on all the pieces here is I've jointed one face, jointed a matching edge, and then planed them to just the, over our thickness. Now what we need to go through and do is just double check all of our pieces and just see if there's any pieces that we're not actually gonna be able to get to our final thickness or dimensions or whatever it may be. So I already know that I have a few. As I was running stuff through the planer, uh, I saw a few checks in that that were just kind of in the middle of the boards that I never would have been able to see previously. Uh, they started appearing. I've got one of my longer pieces over there. I ended up jointing it too much on, uh, and the ends of it are just a little bit too thin. They're almost five eighths of an inch thick. So that's gonna be, you know, we're not gonna be able to get our final piece out of there. So we're gonna have to go and remill some more boards. This is where it's really important to have a little bit of extra wood in your shop. Now, one of the things that is worth mentioning, on my long stretchers, I should have used some five-quarter stock that I do have in my shop. Uh, I was hesitant to use it just because I got that. That's the only five-quarter white oak I've ever actually seen in Calgary. So I didn't want to use it up. But for stuff like those long stretchers, the ones that are over four feet long, uh, that, that's a perfect time to use that kind of stuff because you're not gonna risk wasting material like I've done on a few of those right there. And so it's important to do these checks at this stage because like I mentioned, my stock is not at its final dimensions yet. We're, we're going to about uh, 0 0.75, you know, three quarters of an inch. And right now my calipers, I'm reading about 0 0.77, 0 0.78, you know, right in between there. So we'll be able to do one more final pass on the planer. This is really important because when we take those new pieces that we're gonna be milling right now, and we take them down to the thickness, we wanna make sure that in our, we're doing one final pass on all of our pieces, including the new ones, to make sure that they're all the exact same thickness. Now, the one downside of this, obviously, is because these defects are only showing up now, uh, these new pieces that we're gonna be making are not gonna get the same opportunity to rest that all this stuff did. 
So again, it's gonna be really important to take the milling process nice and slow, make sure I'm doing the appropriate thing through the planer of you know take, trying to take off equal material from both sides of the piece. That'll help limit the, the overall movement these things are gonna go through. And so that really is just a big part of the fine woodworking aspect because now that I have all these pieces milled, I need to really quickly get onto cutting joinery. Like in the next two days, I need to have all the joinery cut on these before they start moving around and doing stuff that I don't want them to do. Uh, but the sooner I can kind of get these pieces together and you know, or at least get the joinery cut on them, the better off I'm gonna be in the long run. So the clock has started to tick on these pieces. So I would love to, you know, remill those new pieces, uh, let them sit for a few days and then, you know, catch them up to the rest of these pieces later on. But that's just not an option at this point in time. And so for this milling stage that I'm doing right now, I want to make a small correction from what I said earlier in the video. Uh, definitely doing it the way I'm doing it right now is the very pain. It's the efficient way, but it's very painful to do because all I'm doing is just spending hours and hours and hours running all these pieces through. Now it's nice because all these pieces come out to the exact same dimensions. It makes it a little bit easier later on, but that's not super important. Probably what I should have done to make this process a little bit more enjoyable is I should have just chosen one section. This is what I'd initially planned to do is just kind of start section by section. I'd work my way through these pieces, but instead I just went through and milled all the pieces for some reason. So I think in my brain, I was just trying to think, you know, setting up the table saws a few times as possible, setting up the dado stack as few times as possible would be easier. But in reality, you have to kind of balance what's gonna be more efficient with what's gonna be more enjoyable because I can definitely feel myself slowing down a little bit because this is not really a fun day of woodworking. It's really just passing wood through machinery, which is not, you know, it's, which is not a ton of fun. It's fun to do some milling in a day, but if you spend your entire day just milling lumber down, it's not a super fun time. And so these are all of our failed pieces. Now only one of these is actually due to not having enough thickness on it, which is this really long stretcher where you can see that it just didn't have enough to even get close. But not only is this piece too thin, it also has some internal checks in it. So the rest of these boards also have these internal checks in them. And so this is something that you really have to watch out for with white oak. It's the most common in white oak. I haven't really seen it too much in maple, cherry, walnut. Uh, I can't think of any other woods right now, but, it, but very much so with white oak, it will quite often happen. And so sometimes these checks are big enough to actually see and you can, you know, you can avoid those boards at the lumber yard. These checks are just right in the middle of the board. You know, you can't see them from the outside of the board. You only start to see them when you actually start removing material. Now, chances are, especially with this one here, you can see it's a pretty good check right in the middle there. Uh, if I would looked a little bit closer when I was laying out my stock, I may have actually noticed that and uh, not been put it through the whole process here. But again, if you also don't want to waste material, so... Sometimes when you have these internal checks, when you're removing material, sometimes you're able to remove enough material that those go away. So I think I think on a few of these boards, I knew about that. Like this one, I knew that there was this check on the end here, uh, but I thought I might be able to get through it through the milling process. And so all this means now is you just have to go through and replace each of these pieces. So I already know the dimensions. Basically all I have to do is lay this piece down on, on a full size piece of white oak, trace it out, and I just know I need to cut that out. So luckily we do have some consistency to it. So we've got three pieces that need to be three inches, two pieces that need to be two and a half inches. Uh, these ones are one and five eighths, I believe, or one and a half. And then both of these ones are one and five eighths. And so we're gonna be trying to get this, replace this long one on a piece of five quarter stock, just because I don't wanna run the risk of it not working again, uh, because wasting material over and over again just kind of gets annoying after a while. And so I pulled these boards from the lumber stack and I just wanted to show you guys what these checks look like when they're kind of hidden in the board here. So if you're looking closely, you can pick up on that pretty easily under good lighting on my table saw here. I can actually see it you know, really easily. There's a few down at the bottom here too, but that's probably the most obvious one right there. And all it is is just a little crack right in the middle of the board. And just due to the nature of white oak, there's a lot of dark marks, a lot of stuff like that. So you just, ha you have to be looking very carefully to see them. And obviously sometimes you're gonna miss them and you're gonna have to remill pieces like we're doing here. Now what you can do if you have boards like this, the wood to the left and the right of this is just fine. So if I can get a piece that fits in there and I can get a piece that fits in there, that's a perfect use of this board. So it really it's just a thing to watch out for when you're working with white oak is just watch for these little checks you know, just kind of mix into your pieces. And it's gonna be completely random. Sometimes it'll be in the sapwood, sometimes it'll be in the heartwood. It really doesn't matter.
Okay, so we got all of our parts milled up. Now we're gonna jump over to the table saw and start counting everything down to its final uh, width and length. So we're gonna start with the width because that's gonna be a little bit easier just to kind of get everything down to. Then we'll finish off with cutting everything down to the lengths. Then from there, we can actually get onto some joinery. So I honestly don't know if I'm gonna get onto the joinery today. So this is currently day two of milling. So far we've gone through and jointed one face and one edge, pass it through the planer to get it down to its close thickness, and then dial in that thickness on the drum sander. Now the drum sander is kind of an interesting part of the milling process that sometimes I'll use it, sometimes I won't. The reason I'm using it for this project is purely because I'm working with maple. Now, if you've never worked with maple before, one of the interesting things that happens is as you mill maple, even if you have some nicks in that, in like your planer blades and your jointer blades, it gets really, really smooth and kind of sticky uh, to your cast iron surfaces when you cut it with a steel blade. So by putting it through the drum sander at 80 grit, it brings some texture back. And so now there's enough small ridges on here that when I place it down on my table saw, it's still flat. It still sits nice and flat. There's no rocking around, anything like that but if there's enough air cushion under there that it will still float across the cast iron, it's not gonna suction cup down. Alright, so we now have a whole bunch of piles just around the shop of perfectly milled up and square boards that the only thing left to do to them is to cut them to their final lengths and cut some joinery into them. So what we're going to start with is any of our pieces that are going to have a one inch tenon on them. So basically how this is going to work is we're going to have all of our side stretchers are going to have one inch tenons on them as we've already cut into our leg stock. Uh, then all of our front and back stretchers are also going to have those one inch long tenons on them. All of the pieces that are gonna go between those front and back stretchers, those are all gonna have uh, quarter by half inch tenons on them that we're eventually gonna cut into all those stretchers and that, so that's gonna take some time to actually get to. So this is gonna mean that we're gonna be setting up the dado stack multiple times, but it is going to be more efficient because it means that I can get all of these long stretchers and the side stretchers, I can get them all fitted up, make sure they're all good to go. Then once I'm confident that those are all fitting up nicely, then I can go in and start cutting my other joinery in that. If I was to cut all of my long stretchers to length and then lay out my mortises and try and cut my joinery for all the, the, in, you know, the more internal stuff, uh, there's a good chance that some of that may need to get removed or just changed later on. So if I can wait to do that until I know that all these components that we're going to be fitting today are going to actually fit, that's going to be a way better way to work. And so really the only important thing here is following my actual cut list being very carefully because right now you can see behind me I've got the whole stack of uh, short parts there. And in that stack is all of our components that are going to go between our front and back frames, uh, make up our side panels, makes up our uh, drawer supports. That whole pile is just kind of generically all the pieces that are going from the front to the back of each one of these pieces of furniture. But the trick is, is that all of them have different joinery, different lengths and that. And so luckily enough, before we end the middle of milling, we wrote down our letter designator on each of the pieces. And so now all I need to do is just go through my pieces, find out the ones specifically that I'm gonna be dealing with today, pull them out, and then I can set all the other ones aside to deal with them another day. One of the important things to mention though now is now that we have all of our parts milled, the clock is definitely ticking on how long we can take to do this. So I don't want to take, you know, I don't want to take my sweet time, you know, take a week to try and get all these things together. It really needs to be over the next, you know, two or three days here, I need to get all the joinery cut onto these pieces, especially our long stretchers. Because the trick is when you're dealing with those extra long pieces, it doesn't really matter if in over the next few weeks, if they start to bend and curve like that, because when we actually mount them into the final structure, we're going to have the, you know, dividers with dovetails and we're going to have them more tendon into the legs. They're going to be in a fixed position where that warp is not really going to affect anything. So right now, while I have them nice and perfectly flat, this is when I need to make sure that I get my joinery cut into them. Same thing with all of these short ones. They're not too much to worry about. There's not a whole lot of wood here to move. They will warp and cup. Uh, if I do leave them for a little bit too long, but I also did follow a good procedure, letting them rest for a few days. I let them rest for a few days during the milling process as well. Um, so they are, they, they should be fairly stable. So that's nothing too, too big to worry about. But on all those pieces that I'm not going to be working on today, I'm going to make sure I leave them in a nice big stack like that. That way there is some pressure holding them together and the ones on the top should be fine. Uh, and if I really do get concerned about it, I can just throw like a chunk of eight quarter wood on top of that to apply some more downward pressure just to keep everything from moving around as much. 
Because again, the trick right now is I just want to limit movement as long as possible until I can get that joinery cut into it. Once the joinery is cut into it, it really doesn't matter if that wood moves around a little bit. Alright, so if you guys remember when we did the legs, I said that there was no good way to put a stop out in this space here to reference the legs against. Now, I had a realization just a few moments ago when I was trying to think about how I could do this accurately, because for all these stretches that are going to go on the wide dresser and the, on the tall dresser, they need to be the exact same length. Now, if I try to get each of these stretchers to 60 and 3 quarters of an inch long, that is going to be very challenging because then I would really have to go in with a shooting board and you know really try and sneak up perfectly to that 60 and three quarter mark. But what's a lot better is if I can make sure that every single one of these stretchers is the exact same length, even if they're 60.70 inches, you know, or we're off by 0 0.05 of an inch, that doesn't matter. As long as they're all the exact same length, that is the important detail. And so the best way to do that is by setting up a stop and cutting them on the table saw. And so like I mentioned when we were cutting the legs, there's no good way to put a stop out in space here because these reach way off the edge of my table saw here. They're way longer than my miter gauge. Uh, and there's just no good way to do it. Except I think I just figured out a way to deal with it. And that is using this machine that is behind me here that you guys can't really see because it's kind of short, but that is the jointer. So my table saw is over here and my jointer is right here. So the jointer has a movable fence on it. And so what I can do is for these long ones, I can just bring the fence all the way up to the edge of my jointer here. And I can slightly move that fence around until I dial it into the right length against my table saw blade here. So this is where we come back to that point of repeatability versus accuracy. Because the fence on my jointer here is not super easy to adjust. It's kind of a, you know, it's a very brute force adjustment. It doesn't have like micro dial adjustments, anything like that. So we may not reach that perfect 60 and three quarter inch length. We might be a little bit more, we might be just a little bit less. Doesn't really matter because it'll mean that I can get every single one of these stretchers to the exact same length, you know, perfectly aligned with each other. So that when I go and cut joinery later on, everything will just line up a lot easier. So you guys can see how this is a lot better method than the one we use to cut the legs. Uh, if you have something like a jointer in your shop or just some solid piece of machinery that you can move, I highly recommend doing this.